and welcome to another Dynamic CCTV technical blog. Today we're going to take a look at the new EasyViz DB1 doorbell uh, and how also how it wires through our DC1 WH mechanical chime and transformer, both of which are available from Dynamic CCTV. So if we start with the, the doorbell itself, it's a new EasyViz product. It's got a lot of advantages over the, the old height vision model, three megapixel uh, resolution camera with 180 degree field of view. It's got a five meter PIR motion detection on it for motion alerts. So anybody getting within five meters of the, of the doorbell, um, you will receive a notification on your phone. It'll also record an event clip to either the cloud or to the onboard SD card. It's also got five meter IR night vision. So you'll obviously re uh, receive good quality images during the hours of darkness. The front faces are hot swappable. There's three different colors, white, brown and black can be easily unclipped from the front. This also um, allows you to see the actual QR code which is how the unit is added to the EasyViz app. There's also a reset button there which again is hidden behind the front fascia. The side reveals the micro SD slot behind that uh, IP rated uh, gland. You've got your, your uh, 128 gigabyte micro SD card again for recording video events and also call log snapshots. So that clips back onto the front like so. The doorbell's powered off an AC power source. It's got a good range, 9 to 24 volts AC it can take, which is handy because a lot of the mechanical chimes on the market are also AC powered. So this fits nicely in with a lot of mechanical chimes. Our unit, the DC1WH, which is available from Dynamic CCTV, uh, works 100% with this unit. And we'll now take a look at how you would wire that up. The bell transformer obviously has 230 volt mains in. It's got three taps on its secondary winding, a four volt, an eight volt, and a 12 volt. Obviously for compatibility with the chime and the, the doorbell, we need to be using the 12 volt feed. So we run a 12 volt feed out of the secondary winding of the transformer. First thing we've got is an inline fuse, again, which is supplied with the DB1. That'll protect against any overload or short circuit issues. Uh, so that wants to go in series on one of your power feeds. We're then running the second feed from the fuse into the solenoid of the mechanical chime. The solenoid runs across terminals two and three within the DC1WH. So we're coming out of the fuse into the terminal three into the solenoid at one end. We're then coming out uh, of terminal two at the other end of the solenoid and on into the doorbell. Secondary power feed from the doorbell is fed all the way back to the ground on the 12 volt tap of the secondary winding of the transformer. So we've basically got a situation where the solenoid is wired in series um, with the doorbell, like so. Now, if you're wondering what this little device is here, it's the power kit, it comes with the DB1. Basically what happens when you press the doorbell, uh, there is an inrush, a sudden inrush of current um, which causes the solenoids to energize and uh, hit the, 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 the chime panels as so. So what this power kit does is it wires in parallel across the solenoid. As you can see, we've got the solenoid across here. We've got the power kit wired in parallel across it uh, and then on into the doorbell. So this power kit acts as a, as a, as a dampener against uh, too much inrush current for when the doorbell is pressed. So again, protecting the equipment, protecting the solenoid, protecting the doorbell from any um, damage due to inrush current. So it is very important that you do wire this in uh, when you're using the chime. It's got a couple of removable sticky back pads on it, so you can quite easily peel them off and stick it, make it nice and neat and tidy inside the mechanical chime itself. Once you've done that, you can apply the lid in situ, and that makes everything nice and neat and tidy. These little orange screw caps do come with the DB1 as well. And if you're doing any cable terminating, it makes everything sort of neat and tidy again. The screw on nice and tight, keeps everything solid and secure, so mechanically sound. You also get three different mounting plates with the DB1. We've got the traditional flat plate there, a vertically tilted back plate, and a horizontally tilted uh, back plate as well, just to side tilt the DB1, them three mountain plates are supplied with a DB1 also. So what we'll do now, uh, now we can see how, how the, the unit is wired up through the chime, 
is we'll uh, we'll take a look at some of the more in-depth settings of the doorbell within the EasyViz app. Okay, now we're going to take a look at some of the DB1 doorbell settings within the EasyViz app. First thing you'll need to do is download and install the EasyViz app from the App Store and create a, a, a login a login account. Once you've done that, you'll see a screen similar to what we've got here, allowing you to add a device. So if we click on the Add Device button, we'll now see a QR code scanner. That allows us to scan the QR code on the front of the DB1 and add it to the uh, app and also the EasyViz Cloud. So it's found the, the DB1, bottom of the screen, device is powered on, we click on that and then we click the next icon. It's now taking us through some of the Chime installation procedures that we've seen in the earlier video. So we click install Chime, we choose mechanical which is the Chime we're using and it takes us through the procedure of installing the mechanical Chime along with the power kit and shows you how it's wired in parallel with the solenoid as we've seen earlier and how you uh, fix the power kit to the inside of the chime before putting the lid on etc. So all that's shown there in diagram with description. Once you've done that, uh, click on I finished installing at the bottom. It's now got to, got to the point where it's going to add the DB1 to uh, Wi-Fi access point. What it'll do is it'll add itself to the same access point that your phone's connected to. So make sure your phone is connected to the correct SSID that the DB1 is going to run off. Uh, it will work off 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies so you don't need to worry about um, setting to a specific frequency so click next it's now going to recommend that the db1 and the phone is within 1.5 meters of the router uh, once you've read that and understood that click on the x it's now got the connection parameters for our wi-fi network our ssid and our password um, so obviously once you've got that correct, click next. So the unit is now going to uh, configure itself to your Wi-Fi and also create a handshake with the cloud. Take approximately 40 seconds to do. Connecting to Wi-Fi, please wait. So this procedure like you say is ongoing now. Should... Wi-Fi connected. Registration successful. Not too long now, nearly there. Configuration complete. Welcome to EasyViz. Okay, so that's the, the doorbell added to your EasyViz account. It's created a handshake with the cloud and it's also added itself to your access point, um, same access point your phone's connected to. Immediately we've got a live uh, image there from the camera. There you are, hello. And we've got some settings underneath which we can see, uh, an audio option and also at times device time options. The audio relates to your live and playback images, so if you want audio to accompany your videos, you want that to be on. It's on as default. All of the time is set up pretty much how you'd want it to be with daylight saving and your time zone set to uh, Greenwich Mean Time GMT. So click next step. We've now got to the point where we can configure the motion PIR. So we can set up the range from 1.5 meters to 5 meters maximum. If you want to shorten the range depending on the distance between the doorbell and the perimeters of your property, just click on the blue bands and they can be removed or re-added so if we set ours back to, to 5 meters click save and there we have the doorbell <coughs> successfully added to your EasyViz easy account it appears on the home screen like so um, we can click on the actual icon to view our live st uh, stream there we go we've got an audio icon at the bottom which I've got muted at the moment to, um, to stop interfering with my speech We've got a two-way audio icon at the bottom. You can initiate that at any time, so it doesn't necessarily have to be anybody ringing the doorbell. You simply click on that and it'll start the two-way audio. Two audio. So we'll take that off before we get nasty feedback. We've also got a snapshot and video camera icons where you can take an immediate snapshot and also record live video to your smartphone. So if we click the snapshot icon in the middle, you can see that it's took a snapshot and saved it to my album on, on my particular phone, several others on there from earlier. We've also got the right hand side of the video camera which is live video. We've got a call log at the bottom which shows us when we've received or missed somebody's call. So you can see when somebody's visited your property that you may have missed. Um, if you were expecting the Avon lady and you missed them then this call log will show you that they uh, did visit you and the time that they visited. We've also got a video history icon bottom right and a cloud play. And the cloud play is EasyViz's own uh, cloud subscription 
um, for recording images to, to, to their cloud servers. You can subscribe to a plan through through uh, the link there in front of, that we can see at the moment, or we can use onboard SD card storage um, on the actual DB1 itself. And the video history tab bottom right will show us any recordings that we may have. Um, and you can see there we have some footage on there already. We can zoom in to make it easier for us to navigate through the footage if there's only small amounts of it. This footage is recorded using the PIR motion detector, so it is. Uh, PIR activated recordings only but that is beneficial because it won't waste your storage and it certainly won't continuously record to the storage obviously um, shorten its life so that's your playback footage that we can see there so we'll go back to uh, the home screen we can click on the menu option we've got some additional settings here some that we've seen previously on the actual adding of the device answer doorbell call uh, this needs to be on if you want the calls to ring through at your phone. If you turn it off, then the, the doorbell will pretty much act as a conventional doorbell, only alerting the people in the property, and uh, not alerting you if you're out and about uh, away from the property. So that wants to be on. We've got our chime type, which we've seen. That's set to mechanical. There's two other options, electronic and not install. It is important that you get the correct um, option ticked here for the type of chime you're using, or if you're not using a chime, as this is important in the way the DB1 behaves when the button is pressed, uh, mechanical and electronic charms will behave differently and will require different loads. Uh, from the, you know, the DB1 is basically in control of that when the button is pressed, and the same would not install. There are some electronic charms on the market that are compatible with the DB1, which certainly make sure that you get a compatible charm um, before installing it, just to ensure that um, you're not going to cause any damage by wiring up to the DB1. Moving down, we've got status light and IR light. The status light is a blue light on the front of the DB1. That can be turned on or off. Doesn't really do any harm being on. Doesn't really do any harm being off. The IR light is the your five meter infrared for nighttime vision. Um, it can be disabled, but we would only recommend you do that if you do have a well uh, illuminated area in the, uh, in the uh, periods of darkness. Alarm notification is the setting up of the PIR motion detection on the front. So we've got alarm notification on, we can turn that on. This enables um, push notification alarms to your mobile device and also uh, event recordings to the SD card or the cloud. We can set a notification schedule up, so if you didn't want it 24-7 you can have it so that it's only on certain days during certain times. You can also select the mode in which the alert comes through. Um, basically that is the sound alert that you get, if you don't want any click on mute. And we've also got soft and intense as an alert. So we turn that on. If I uh, detect um, the PIR motion detection by moving my hand over it, hear a beep from the unit, which is what we want. We'll also get footage recorded to the SD card for that as well. And we get the push notification, which you're seeing quickly come through. The push notifications are actually stored under the messages tab at the bottom. You can see I've got one message there. We click on that you can see the PIR alarm that has just been triggered from there we can click on it and we can also play it back pressing the playback tab at the bottom so it's kind of an easy bookmarking to every every one of the events as and when they come in if you don't need the notification when it happens regularly check your messages uh, tab at the bottom and you'll be able to see if any alerts have come through that way so if we go back from there so if we click back on the home from there and go back into the menu move down towards the bottom the last few areas that we haven't looked at storage status tells you the status of your onboard and also cloud storage plans the cloud storage plan on ours has expired obviously you need to make sure that you have a valid subscription in place for that and the memory card is showing normal which means it's initiated and it's um, in a normal condition we've also got the device version which is up to date uh, if a new version is released you can upgrade it from the EasyViz app so very simple going if it says there's a new version click on that and that'll keep your db1 up with the latest um, uh, firmware version <clears throat> image encryption and image encryption password the verification code is uh, located on the actual device label of the db1 that's also doubles up as the as the db1's password if you wanted to add it to an nvr uh, add the stream to an nvr you would use the verification code as the actual uh, connection password as well and that like I said is located on the white label on the back of the uh, the DB1 itself 
So there you go, we've had a look at uh, how the how the DV1 is wired through the mechanical chime in an early video. We've had a look at how it's added to the EasyViz app and we've had a look at some of the settings within the, um, the DV1 uh, through the app. Okay, now we've had a look at some of the more in-depth settings of the, the doorbell itself within the EasyViz app. We can obviously test the actual unit in action with the mechanical chime and also onto the actual mobile phone. How this should work is when the doorbell is initially pressed, both the doorbell and the mechanical chime will sound. So the person pressing the button will know that the doorbell has rang. People inside the property will know the doorbell's rang from the mechanical chime. And if you just happen to be out and about, not in the property, then your mobile phone will ring and inform you that somebody's at the door and also allow you to answer the doorbell and speak to that person directly. So if I begin by pressing the button, as you can see there, the mechanical chime sounded. We've now got my mobile phone uh, calling me. I can answer or reject this call. I won't answer it um, right now due to the possibility of nasty feedback between the two devices, but you can see there the basic principles of what's happening. You can see who's at the door and you can also answer or reject that call. So if we reject that there. It is worth knowing that the, uh, the demonstrations today have been done with the EasyViz app, but this unit will actually work with the Hit Connect app as well. Uh, as long as you've got version 3.8.0 or above, this unit will work with your Hit Connect uh, app. So you can tie this in with all of your uh, CCTV or your c single CCTV system, whatever whatever the, uh, the, UK, the, the uh, <coughs> situation may be. So there we are, we've now seen um, what you can do with this EasyViz doorbell, we've seen what you can do with the mechanical chime, all of this is available now from Dynamic CCTV, so um, please get in touch with, with sales or your sales account manager for more information. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one.